Much more careful. We'll see if they tighten things up here in game two and get themselves a 2-0 against Samsung Galaxy. Fizban against Bliss once again. And don't forget, OGN.Nazubu.TV. Go vote for Prey right now. Yep, that's right. Prey, you should just get it. Just give it to Prey. It doesn't matter what we see for the rest of the week. Prey, give him the Azuber. Az Azuber, give him the Azuber Super Play Award. <laughs> Showing off your Midwest that's, roots right uh, no, there. No, I suddenly just became the coach from that Homestar Runner cartoon. <laughs> Midwest Nobody talks like that in the Midwest. What the? What? Who knows? Nobody goes there anyway. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> that's like a third of the country you're talking about there. Did you grow up in Colorado? Isn't that kind of like part of the Midwest a little bit? No. Yeah, I, I think it is actually. Yeah. Slightly. Oh, okay. We'll just we'll just let that one go. Rumble picked up by Smep. We do have the best football team. The Green Bay Packers. <laughs> okay, here we go with your opinions. My facts. <laughs> They, they, have, they haven't even won the most Super Bowls of any team. What's your definition? One more than the Broncos. <laughs> Boom! I didn't say the Broncos were the best team. Nice try, though. You're right, but it does make the Packers a better one. <laughs> anyway, I heard there's a different game going on nearby. <laughs> oh, look, it's League of Legends. <laughs> Lee picking up the uh, Jarvan, so he will not be gracing us, gracing us with his magnificent Rengar play in game two, it looks like. And Jana for a gorilla, a scary pickup. Meanwhile, Lulu and Corky picked up by Samsung in their first rotation. We'll see what they grab for the second one. Interesting that GE is prioritizing this Rumble so heavily after it fell all the way through the draft in the last game. Yeah, well, Rumble Jarvan, a good. Especially since duo. Kube's Rumble has been not good this know. season. His ultimates have been very far off, and said they give up that Corky again. But I, I guess they're happy playing the Lucian into Corky. They have been favoring that matchup in their more recent games. Lee Sin, so no more Nidalee for Eve in this one. Ooh, here we go. Oh, boy. All right, Team Ghost. Oh, oh, it's Lucian Victor. All right, I would have liked to see Callista Karthus. Well, very good team composition, and this one should work better. I prefer the Janna, generally speaking, with the Victor because she does offer the counter engage, and Kuro had a hard time staying alive. Victor yeah. in general has a hard time staying alive, and it's worth mentioning that in GE's first two games against Incredible Miracle, they always had that Janna paired with it, so that was the first time we've seen Victor with a hard engage support. I wasn't really a big fan, yeah. especially considering Cassidy and uh, Hecarim were on the enemy team. I think securing that Janna earlier in the draft, because remember, they picked Victor in their first round of the draft on red side last time. Could have just had Janna. <laughs> it's true. Pretty cocky. Uh, I think the hacker and pick is not a bad one at all for Kube. He did uh, quite well on that last game. Certainly, although they don't have that same high damage threat going for the mid lane Lulu in this game. So they're not going to have quite as much dive potential as they did in the last match. True enough. And that'll be a lock-in. No surprise, Kuve did do a good job on Hecarim in the last one. He did die a lot early, but his split pushing got them four towers in one fell swoop in the mid game. So yeah. he carried I think about mostly, as much as he could. Mostly that was GE playing poorly as opposed to Sam Kuve doing anything because all he had to do was walk up the lane and auto a turret and have GE not respond in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I agree. Well, I'm thinking about what a Chaos Storm on top of an Equalizer is going to do, and it's oh, probably going to be a lot oh. of damage, or in a Jarvan Ultimate. Ooh. Yeah. Brutal. I mean, this is a brutal AoE engage composition. It's a pretty scary team, definitely. And now they they have a lot more peel for the back line, too. So GE should be able to run this one better than the last comp they run. Samsung not quite as hard into the back line. And honestly, I'm not sure this Nami ult is really going to do much, because once the Jarvan ult goes in with the Victor and Rumble ultimates, that, that Tidal Wave doesn't do anything to any of those abilities. That's so true. Fairly easy to dodge <laughs> by uh, Lucian as well, so he's still going to be able to come from the side and uh, do a lot of damage. I would have taken Thresh here, though, but that's just me. It's just you. It's you and your love of Thresh. <laughs> my Thresh love. That's right. Thresh extravaganza. That's Monty's favorite thing, I guess. I don't know. Enough of that. Will GA get the 2-0? Let's get the game.
All right, hold up. That was clearly the worst game intro I have ever done. Pretty sure. It was almost as bad as your fact that the Packers are the best football team of all time. Well, that is a fact. <laughs> I can't I can't change that it's a fact. It's just a fact. It's science. I think there's a lot of people out there that would be happy to tweet at you and say that I'm right. I'm sure there are more people happy to tweet at you and say that you're wrong. I'm not so sure. <laughs> not so sure. I'll take my odds. 31 out of 32 versus right. 1 out of 32. I'll take sure. those odds, Della. I don't think I'm too worried about that. <laughs> DSM. <laughs> about the same odds. <laughs> All right. Well, a little bit of harass going on. Bliss yeah. takes a death ray in the mid lane. A curl with the ghost as well. Off five star for Smeb, so looks like they are going to be wanting to go into that 1v1. Haven't seen a lane swap so far, even though that has been one of the most surefire way to defeat Samsung is by lane swapping against them. They are one of the worst teams in this league at dealing with that. You know, I feel like after uh, the GE Tigers went 7-0 in the first round of the tournament, like uh, somebody came to them and they're like, Good job. Now try it on a harder difficulty. <laughs> you know, like one of those old video games or you, something. And you so can't like, buy well, wards or upgrade your trinkets. <laughs> it's a new yeah. handicap. You have to play Victor every game. It's back to hanging out. Oh, we should mention, too, uh, Cloud Templar is now a dad. He is indeed. Yeah, he and his wife had their, had their uh, first child this morning. He was saying apparently to the crowd that uh, he was going to stay with his wife and a new baby, but then he saw the medical bill and he immediately just like left and came to the studio. <laughs> to make more money. Yeah, that's right. He needed, needed to get here. He needed to make that uh, income. But congratulations <laughs> to the Cloud Templar family. That's Cloud Squire, I believe, is his son. Cloud Squire. That's right. A little yordle. Well, level two, gotten a little bit early by Samsung. And that nice W uh, poke from Nami at those early levels. Good stuff in lane. Oh, nice burst on the Fury, though. Well, looks like potentially a very early gank here as Eve motions up towards the top side, but Rumble pulls back away from the turret. He gets that ward into the try. Let's see Eve, maybe think about that level two gank, but that was a smart play by Smeb, not really committing early on, getting the warden when he needs it so he can continue pushing forward with the flame spitter. Eve still only level two. And Blue buff, still not taken too. Yeah, that's, he went uh, Krugs to red and sat in tri -brush for a minute. Now he starting to head out through the rest of his jungle, but very late Blue buff. Crux to Red was my uh, R&B group in the 90s. <laughs> That's right. We were pretty good. I, I always knew you were a fan of the Krug life, Doha. That's right. You know me. And, uh, all my listening of Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know, TLC. The best. All right. Well, Lee's going to come up and cover Rumble's butt. Here in the early game, of course, that is the most likely lane to be ganked right now. But Smeb wants to put on that pressure. Yeah, sure and does. So that means that Lee has to be up here, supporting him, just to make sure that he doesn't get ganked and immediately die. As that's probably not a huge amount of concern for the other lanes right now. And in a counter ganking situation, I'd certainly put my money on uh, Smeb and Lee. Right, he's waiting there too, so they may let this wave push out now that it has gone down go. the turret. Kuro will just pop the ghost. Has decided to go coast this game. Yeah. Uh, usually goes for that cleanse, but not a lot of hard CC threats from Samsung, so that's definitely a better choice. Uh, channeling his inner Dade. There we go, a nice knock up on Dakube. He's in big trouble. Will he even flash? No, he's just going to have to give that first blood. Oh, he can't. He's Hecarim. He's got Ignite. Gives the first blood over to Smeb. Meanwhile, action down on the bot lane. Wraith going deep and taking a lot of damage himself here. Healing up a bit with that W. Nice Aqua Prison. Keeps Grill locked up for the moment. Prey taking a lot of damage there. They need to be careful. Exhaust used by Wraith. Ube back. There we go. Now back to the bot lane. Fury in a lot of trouble. He's getting low. Uses that summoner heal and the flash by Gorilla. May just be able to get him with autos. Can Wraith heal? Aqua Prison misses. And that is a sick play from Gorilla. 
that is the kind of bloodthirsty support I'd like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you really see how good GE is in this situation. Oh, definitely. You have to ask yourself in times like these, what precipitated all of this action to occur? And it was Eve showing in the mid lane. And so immediately the rest of the team springs into action. The forethought from GE, where's the most likely lane for this this Lee Sin to gank. Okay, it's top lane. So Lee walks all the way into the lane, into the top rush. They continue to melt the wave onto the turret so that every wave they have a chance when Hecarim backs back out in order to make a play. They're looking for the counter gank, but they have the opportunity to make the play. Okay, then we see nope. Eve appear in the mid lane. Well, they just wait for that wave to go away, knowing that there's no chance of Lee Sin being there. Wrap up that kill on a Hecarim with no movement abilities. Easy kill to take. And then the bot lane, who has that winning matchup pre-6, just kind of all in Samsung's bot lane. And they're able to pick up two kills across the map with it. Well, Kuro only has to burn Ghost. Just really fantastic planning from GE. They're looking much more like their old selves in this one. Uh, Kuve having to back way off there to avoid a dive from Lee as well, and he still could be in trouble. A couple of people from uh, Samsung coming up as well, though. QE combo misses. Kuve pushes Lee back against well. Smep taking a lot of turret damage. Oh, the minions, minions. get him, and Kuve picks up a kill there via the caster minions. Whoops. And speaking of good play, well, then there's the other side of that coin where you make plays oh, when you don't Lee. have full knowledge. Hit with that Aqua Prison. QE combos away. Kuro right there. Can they escape? Lots of shadows. I think Lee's in a lot of trouble. Kube takes a lot of damage, but Kuro, now Bliss coming up. What are the GE Tigers doing? Just more laziness, it looks like, coming in here. And there's Gorilla saving Kuro, but... To Samsung's Oops. credit, that was a very deceptive play. Coming up into the top side with Wraith on the support in order to counteract the dive. They sensed that GE was going to try and continue that punishment on Kube. They got it right, especially since Kuve wasn't six at the start of that fight, and they tried to take advantage of the equalizer power spike versus the ultimate less Hecarim. But uh, they made the play, that is, GE did, without full knowledge of where two members of Samsung were on the map, and they were ultimately punished for it. Now they're going to potentially lose a dragon right here. Let's take a look at this play. They start dirty farming. Meanwhile, it's a 3v2, actually. That's and just, that is a terrible uh, equalizer from Smab. Uh, well, the EQ uh, combo is not much better. And there he dies yep. to Caster Minions. And Lee walks around again to get hit. He knows there's a ward in there, now, why and he walks in when he knows it's a 3v1. Interesting choice. Well, Kuro comes up too when he knows that Bliss can collapse on him as well. So really, I mean, it was a chain reaction of events there that Kind of boggled the mind a little bit. After that, such a clean play from GE earlier, making great use of knowledge of the enemy jungler, yeah. they immediately decide to disrespect the enemy jungler and <laughs> all in. You know, that said, all the lanes are up in CS right now. GE Tiger is still uh, in the lead, but... They didn't give up an objective for it right there. The, the only thing they did was even out the kills, so yeah. it's not the end of the world, but you certainly hope for a bit more when taking a look at this team, and they just don't seem to be quite on point today, do they, Doa? No, not so much. Not so much. Interesting items on uh, Prey right now. He's got the pickaxe, and he's got the longsword. I would imagine he's eventually going to go to IE, but... He's going to go IE Ghostblade. That's what he he builds that every game oh, pretty much. So he just wants the flat ID. He only had those items, that amount of gold, and the flat AD in terms of harassing this early in the game is going to help him out. Samsung. Oh, they're going to get a free dragon. Free dragon looks like there's a very unfortunate recall from Lee yep. out of the red brush. And they don't even really see this going down. They had late pressure at bottom, but with Kuro back. They're going to give it up. I guess so. Smeb still pushing up that top lane. Getting a nice CS lead over Kuve. Yeah, this is a great situation for Rumble to be in, too. You don't yeah. expect him to have this kind of advantage at this point in the game, but he has done well it's in spite of that one unfortunate dive. So the luxury, too, that Smeb has had in terms of being able to build the haunting guys instead of finishing arm guard first is pretty great for him. 
happy with that. So that he will be able to do a lot more in team fights than he would normally with the extra magic penetration. But not fighting that first dragon. Good, good take, a uh, good advantage taken by Samsung on that recall timing. Look like, looks like even in the back there. And so now the GE Tiger is kind of in one of those situations where you can just sort of farm, keep that CS lead growing a little bit if they can, and wait for the next drag. Might be able to push down a turret or two. Uh, given enough time, they certainly have done a great job of Smeb. Like, of course, the dive wasn't good, but everything else has been really going his way up here. He's maintained just an excellent amount of control. Goes for the home guard, interestingly, right now. Uh, not a very common early item on the rumble that we see, but yeah, that is a bit surprising. G just wants. I, I think he just wants to continue to chip away at this turret. Go back to base, heal up, run back into lane, match the speed of that Hecarim, and try and keep Kuve bottled up in the top side and away from split pushing. And by limiting the amount of damage Hecarim could do for your turret early, you do slow down his splitting when he becomes a big threat with that Trinity Force, although he's pretty darn far away from it right now. Well, yeah, he went Merc Treads first. Into another Null Magic Mantle. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get Shows how much like a, what, what a hard time he's having in this lane so far. Yeah. Do you think he's going to build the full Hex Drinker? Do you think he's going to just turn that into a yeah, cowl, first maybe? Party? Yeah, cowl too. Oh, uh, Smad so maybe in a little bit of trouble here. Gets pushed back against the wall, taking a lot of damage. He's going to go ahead and flash, but it's too late. Well, why didn't ult right there? Uh, yeah. May have been able to prevent some of the follow up. Waited a long and time to flash, too. And it's a short, well, he, he was CC'd for most of that time, but. Well. Yeah. But maybe had a chance to flash air earlier. Lee wants to defend this turret. He will be chased off alongside Kuve. But that's about, just about going to even things up for Samsung, who. Yeah. Certainly is looking a lot stronger than we've seen them previously tonight. Yeah, CS is mostly uh, evened up across the board as well, too. It's also worth mentioning in GE's case that they do have two matches this week, and so they may be preparing much more. I would imagine they're preparing much more for their Jin Air match on Saturday, which is I think that's not going a bad idea at all. Much harder yeah. than Samsung, and so we see the same picks that they played last week, and the emphasis on this victor. Uh, they don't want to show anything else that they're doing or perhaps leave a false trail for future opponents that they really value this pick. Uh, Kuve may just be uh, skipping the Trinity Force as a first item altogether. He picked up another yeah, Ruby going Crystal. Visage. Yeah, it looks that way. Against double AP, not a bad idea, but this, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of tank item versus Hecarim's though, and the reason why is because if you're, the, I think the main upside to Hecarim in the current meta is that by going Trinity Force first, he is one of the best split pushers. And if you can get a good combo onto the carry, he can do like a thousand damage instantly. Yeah. Due to the home guard off the teleport and that damage, that speed that gets turned into damage. So if you're not going to use him for that, why not just play Maokai? I mean, Maokai was banned in this game, that's true. But you can play other tanks that are better tanks than Hecarim. Hecarim's job has to be to split push and to get into the back line, line and deal a bunch of damage simultaneously. Otherwise, he just kind of ults in there and stands around looking dumb while he gets auto-attacked. So at least Maokai does that and has 20% damage reduction. Yeah, that ults a little bit more help. Smeb's still doing a decent amount of damage. He's got a decent amount of magic pen already, actually. So you do wonder just how much that Cowl and the uh, Merc Treads are helping through there right now. Girl, backing off right there. Quick shield from Gorilla. So lurking around that mid lane, but they really want this dragon set up. Much better vision this game compared to last one. Yeah. From GE, that is a major point to be made right here. Prey. Oh boy. It's a double gank. Now, Samsung doesn't know they're there, but they do have a good degree of escapability. They have that tidal wave as well. Yeah. Almost time. Ah, oh, Fury pulled back. I felt like they maybe had an opportunity there, but. 
The thing is, they don't know where nice Eve ward. is either, so. Really good ward from Rain. <laughs> Suspected something, didn't walk in. He walked all the way around to the other side to get that ward instead of setting foot in the river. Good precaution. Yeah. Bliss does get chunked out by Kuro right here. Kuro didn't have to drop the Chaos Storm either. That's going to be a little bit of added benefit. Five seconds before the Dragon spawns as well. So Control going over to the Tigers right now. Yeah, looks like Kuro should be able to get this mid lane turret. Great timing. Yep, there we go. All right, and Dragon is up. So, how will the GE Tigers transition this into a Dragon now? Everybody moving towards the Dragon pit. It's the second game in a row, too, where Kuro has got down the enemy mid turret so fast solo on this victory. You can see just how much harassment and damage Victor is able to do, constantly pushing that minion wave in, even against a champion with excellent wave player like Lulu. That's impressive. Doing it against Cassidy is one thing. Doing it against this Lulu is something else entirely, but very good pressure play from GE, especially since he had, did have to play back early after having his ghost blown pretty quickly in this game. GE not committing to this objective yet they want to push their ward line forward they're going to get that opportunity got the setup going they're gonna go for it are they gonna take it prey on his way back to lane and it looks like G's gonna start it throw in Lee Gorilla now coming in but there's a bunch of Samsung players nearby it's a bit dangerous Gorilla trying to zone doing some damage to Lee there's a knockup from the whirlwind and the dragon will go over to GE Tiger Samsung just not enough people there to help out Cuvée opting not to teleport down. Well, also, really good use of the Chaos Storm and the Victor W to clog the choke right there. Make sure they had to retreat and couldn't re-engage in order to take it. So they get an uncontested yep. dragon, really. Samsung not able to put down any fight, really. Yeah, that'll tie things up, too, as far as dragons go this game. It will indeed. So they're off to a fine start. A little bit of a hiccup on that tower dive, but Beyond that, def gonna, definitely yeah. looking solid. Yeah, looking a bit tight with this game. Although that CS lead really has gone down significantly. Yeah, everywhere but the mid lane, really. The top sides. So. Yeah. God, shut up, Super Galaxy <laughs> Ralph. Most annoying skin he's in this game. He's just really excited, man. He just really wants everyone to know how he's here. He's here to help. And what he's doing exactly right. is to yell his moves as he does them, otherwise yeah. the world falls apart. Well, it's like we may see another attempt at a play here. Lee steps out of the brush. Three people, it's a 4v3. 4v3 dive, this exciting dive. stuff. Uh, Kuro doesn't have ult, but they're yeah. just gonna take the tower. Okay. Make the power play and back off. Kuro there for a little bit of insurance. Bliss heading back into the mid lane, using the opportunity to grab as much CS as he can before Kuro returns and the threat of a gank is real again. That's a nice little window for him to do so. But other than that, nice rotation by Kuro. Just make sure that you get that global objective. Keep on moving with that gold lead, and he does. And Prey getting closer to that ghost blade. See he picks up. Getting the brutalizer. All right, two turrets to nothing for GE, so they haven't let QV take four in a row yet this game. It's coming, don't worry. <laughs> We're not at that same point in the game. He has to get the Trinity Force first, though. Yeah. And the Trinity Force will be on its way a little bit faster. Goes for the Phage after the Cowl, and now is going to be building into the Sheen. Yep, not opting to finish that, to finish that uh, Spirit Visage after all. So, GE needs to be starting to think about making some use of this rumble in the mid game. But especially while Kube, he can group with relative safety because Kube can't split push that quickly yet. Certainly would be nice to oh, see something. Oh, here we go. Something. A 1v1, Kube going in on a Smep. Smep forced to use his flash there. Didn't use his ult again. No, save the ultimate. Oh, meanwhile, down there, they managed to grab Eve. They trap in the Cataclysm. He gets out with the safeguard of the ward, though. Flash down. 
Certainly going to come up quite a bit slower than the So cataclysm. many wards for him to use right there, too. Two ultimates also thrown out. Smeb also ulting in the top side just to take out the minion wave. Yeah, he needed time to go back and buy, it looks like. Didn't want to use his teleport, if at all possible, considering he does have that home guard enchantment. Finally finishes an arm guard. Looks like it's about time he needed that item. Hasn't stacked it up at all yet, though, so it will be a few minutes before he can max out the armor on that item. Yep. All right, Rift Scuttler. Actually, it's not all right. That Rift Scuttler is anything just, but all right. He's just hiding. He doesn't die like Dragon and Baron. He doesn't turn into a pile of burnt ash. What a miserable existence, though, for the poor Rift Scuttler. He just gets beaten into submission, beaten yeah. into hiding every time, forced against he, his will to turn his senses to the advantage of one team or another. But he can never die. That's the that's the curse. <laughs> it's like, wasn't there some like Greek myth about this dude that was like chained to a rock? Prometheus. And, like, Prometheus, yes. right? So every morning, like someone comes and like eats his entrails, but then he heals again. Do you know why he was punished like that? Uh, didn't he like uh, hook up with some? Nope. All right, that's usually the explanation in a Greek <laughs> myth, but I guess I was wrong on that one. Kube slowed down a little bit, taking some damage. It's, be off. it's because he stole fire from the gods oh. and, and gave it to humankind. Prometheus, why you gotta steal what? fire? <laughs> why you gotta give it to people? We could have been awesome ice monsters if it weren't for Prometheus. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I do like Kukku. There's the equalizer going down. The turret will die as well. Smeb pops at Zonia's. Will we get there in time? Eve taking some damage. Looks like they're going to go in. Eve. Yep, Eve does go down. Kube has to ult away, and Wraith in big trouble. Flashes over the wall to make it out. Still not going to survive this one, though. Sorry, Wraith. It's a double kill for Smeb. Oh, flash oh. over the wall, and there's a storm in the E. There's a disco ball for Arcade Hecaru. You don't have to thank Kuro. That one's free. Gives you the disco ball for free. That's right. Sounds like a horrible euphemism. <laughs> he probably didn't even need the ult, honestly. All right, what so a Smeb, turnaround from Jiggy Tigers, though. Yeah, Smeb hiding right there, right behind the turret, so that they can't get a good angle on him. Lee coming up and bottling them all up right afterwards, and everyone has to use their flash to escape. Great under turret play by Smeb and Lee, turning around the 2v3 into a double kill, giving up nothing in response. And Kuro on the roam with the flash finisher for the style points. Yep. He should have just like danced over his body then after that happened. Oh, meanwhile, smash him down. Bot lane Fury takes a lot of damage, has to make it out. Can GE secure this dragon? Probably. Looks like they can. Kube could teleport, but he doesn't have home guard. Yeah. So even though GE has no ults, they actually <laughs> get that dragon thanks wow. to chunking out Fury. That a little bit, a little bit weird right there. Without equalizer, cataclysm, or chaos storm. GE is an incredibly old dependent composition, and they stole the Wild Road Samsung, so if we had seen Fury receive, nice chunking right there, probably could have made much more of a fight of that situation, especially since Kuve doesn't need his ultimate to engage. He was sitting in base with teleport up and with home guards on, so probably could have gotten in there and done a good amount of damage. Trinity Force is completed for him now. He about the actually about the same time as last game. He hasn't died as much at this point as he had in game number one. Praise looking good with that IE as well. Oh yeah, IE Ghost Blade almost done yep. with that last whisper. He's been just farming up in that bottom lane. So he'll be really happy right now about where he is at this stage in the game. And a Ghostblade Lucian can push down. He can split push really effectively on that Ghostblade and start spamming your passive on a turret, and you'll be able to take that thing down in no time. Yep. And looks like they do want to push lanes up a little bit more. We're to that point in the game where that's what you do. Just kind of farm, get vision. And their vision is better again this game, still kind of maintaining a lot more over the map overall. I'm interested to see what Samsung does in terms of the lane assignments right now because there's some options here for GE to stop the Hecarim split push. Void Staff nearly done on Smeb. He will be able to trade pretty effectively once that 
item is completed, and Hecarim has no armor, so he will have a tough time dealing with Prey, especially when he can kite with that extra movement oh, speed. Bliss. Bliss taking a lot of damage from the Chaos Storm. Looks like they want to push a tower, and that's what they're going to do. Yep. Nice zoning with that Chaos Storm from Kuro as well. Really good tower attempt right here from GE. Yeah, looks like they're going to get it. Success. Had wards on their flanks, had people coming through that bottom side jungle, and Kuro pops that ult early, removing any defensive capabilities from Samsung, and it's an easy, easy tier two. So. Yeah, it's just cleaner. I mean, this is what we're more used to from the GE Tigers. Kuve's. Oh, he's got the T Force now. Reach may have exceeded his grasp right here. He's going to get cut off, taking a little bit of a longer way, and that'll be enough to take uh -oh. him out at the end. Yeah, I think he's in a bit of trouble here. Ray with a kill there. Anything for Prey's KDA. We have to save it. <laughs> it got damaged in the last game. Yes, it did. Easy Hood sitting at home smiling. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm the king now. <laughs> yep. King of KDA. Well, you play in every game, Easy Hood, and then you could be the king. It's true. Actually, don't do that because I want to watch Faker. Yeah, Faker's better. <laughs> I like Easy Hoon, but, but Easy Hoon's uh, a great player. But SKT needs to play Faker every game. <laughs> they really do. Easy Hoon's a very good player. Had some really good Cassiopeia play the other day. Yeah. But that's what happens when you're on a team where your teammate is Faker. Yep. Life's not fair. But SKT could be Faker. It's true. They keep it real though. <laughs> All right. Huge gold lead, actually. Well, not huge, but decent gold lead for uh, the GE Tigers. But keep in mind, this is the type of gold lead that we saw overcome by Samsung last game at around this time, actually. I don't think we're going to see that again, Noah. That was, I uh, hope not. Pretty terrible League of Legends play from GE. Yeah. We know they're capable of so much more than that. Yeah. And they have tightened things up since that early game dive, made very few mistakes moving forward, and now they're, they've got a nice item advantage coming into play. Two core, three core items actually already completed onto Prey. He is significantly stronger than Fury at this point in time. And Koro there, we can see, has the fully upgraded Hextech core. Yep, it is red. I was wrong last game. I don't play a lot of Victor support <laughs> yet. yet. It's coming though, that W, Upgrade W first, so it sucks everybody in, and then they can get hit by an MF ultimate. Right there. Poke is real, man. <laughs> you can shield yourself, and that's all I do anyway. So <laughs> works for me. It's like Jonda with more damage. <laughs> all right, here we go. Nice siege coming in. GE using the Ghost Blade on the Lucian ult to get four culling off, and there's the zone coming in. Already down to 50% HP. They're forcing their advantage so much better this game. Oh, yeah, using that Chaos Storm. And this is really how I think a top-level victor is used. You know, you use that ult to zone while you're killing turrets. You use it for sieging. Love the use of the Chaos Storm. Love yeah. the use of the Ghost Blade. Prey has really been choosing the appropriate times to use it on objectives. We've seen that ever since he started playing Lucian again in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. almost exclusively using that uh, Yomus to... Um, Push turrets. Yeah. To use it for with or the just uh, with the culling. Yeah. It's obviously great. It really ups your damage in terms of the culling significantly. Oh, nice damage on the Wraith. Oh, oh, oh. Kuro may be in trouble here. Ghost. Yep. Tries to go sway. Oh, gets knocked back. Flashes. There's the ult. Kube picks that one up. Gorilla tried to heal him, but couldn't quite get the. Heals there in time. Wow, Kuve didn't even have to teleport in order to get that flank. So Kuro overextending without enough flank vision on either side. That little engagement. They're still going to go for it. Huge wow, ultimate Bliss is Bliss gone. in a lot of trouble. Yes, Meb really doing work, and they needed this. Kuve back out of his own ultimate, gets exhausted, but it's over now. And GE Tigers in the 4v5 push back Samsung, and they may be able to claim this dragon. Very, very good equalizer. Yeah. And Smeb has a lot of damage at this point in time. So it does make it quite difficult. The burn coming in from the Leandries, and if they wow. catch Samsung a bit out of position, they'll take out dragon number three for themselves. And there's Smeb. <laughs> <laughs> Ha-ha, my equalizer. <laughs> Having a great time. It was, 
It was a really good ult. So let's take a look. Look at everybody oh, lined up. Picked the exact right time. Sends of scattering. Bliss just gets annihilated by Smeb right there. And then the culling chasing everyone else off the back line. Prey dashes forward, but can't hit on everybody. Samsung already on the retreat. Yeah, being there to clear the wave is certainly enough if you want to go back and take a dragon. Ryli is now done for Smeb too. Wow. Using that gold for a nice purpose. That's just more crowd control that they have to peel for prey. And all of this too is just really going to make that uh, Chaos Storm easy to keep on top of the enemies. That's, that's well. a really good point. That's yeah. a really good point. I think a lot of this is tailored around uh, Victor. Hey. Oops. Prey has to use his Ghost Blade to get out of the pit before he takes lethal damage. Yeah, not only the, they've got so many ways to keep people in Equalizer, to keep them in that Death Ray for the second burst and the Chaos Storm. Yeah. A lot of tools, or even stationary just to eat a culling to the face. They have the Cataclysm, they have the Rylize now. GE's comp is really coming together. That, that Rylize is actually a very big power spike for them because of the champions that surround Rumble in this particular comp, they're going to be more than happy. I think that's a great buy. We normally don't see it as a third item on Rumbles, yeah. but I think it's absolutely appropriate here. Well, we just don't see it bought in general a lot. Yeah, sometimes you see it very late in the game on Rumble, but not not typically in the mid game here this early on, but I like it. Look at the difference in wards this time. Yep. Lots more pink wards. Nobody, nobody is hogging slots with useless late game flasks. <laughs> we see two upgraded trinkets in 30 minutes instead of zero upgraded trinkets. So definitely GE decided to turn their brains on this time around. Yep. Teleport coming in. There's a nice tidal wave and that's going to give QB the opportunity to come back in. Prey though jumping in to try to get some kills here. Kube locked up in the back lines. Great cataclysm. Prey, it's like shooting fish in a barrel or fish in a cataclysm in this particular case. And GE just destroys his team fight. Chop up, chalk up another double kill for Smeb. Kuro on the hunt right here, Wraith. Kuro getting the speed off of the crab, does have to dodge an Aqua Prison, but he's still oh. working oh, Yeah, this is the most, much smarter move. So yeah. let Wraith go. He is no threat in the situation. Yep. Take out the Baron and this is more like to it. an easy win. This is more like the GP Tigers we know. I would say, you know who else I like to build a Rylize on, Monty? Who? Annie. Annie well, support. Let's take a look at this. So there's the tidal wave really isn't used the best. Usually you want to use that as a secondary engage, but they try and cut him off. Lee gets in onto Bliss and Eve. Now Smeb lays down a pretty brutal equalizer right there, forces everybody to the left hand side, and Kuve in the back line by himself can't quite take out Kuro. Kuro kites it out with the help of his Q and Prey was extremely Gorilla there well to protected keep him in that fight. safe. Yeah, he was. Kuro was the only one who was really under threat. Otherwise, Lee did an excellent job with that Cataclysm, clogging the choke right there, and then the follow-up AoE, pretty easy from Rumble. And so, Prey has free auto attacks all day with a Cataclysm and a Rylize Equalizer oh to help him out. And now the Baron powered GE Tigers pushing into that bot lane. Yomu's and the culling. And I don't think Cuba is going to get an opportunity to come in on this, no. Chaos Storm on a Fury, but that was actually not the best one because it didn't, it coincided with the wave dying right there. So Fury yeah. able just to pop right back into the fountain and make his way out. They're still going to get the Tower Fury about half a second too late. Tidal Wave comes through. Wave. Smeb's got his equalizer up. Kube going way into the back lines and Prey or Kura rather in big trouble. Wild growth on the Kube gets the knockup. He manages to get the kill in the mid laner. Ah, but Prey comes back in and that's going to be a double for him. Meanwhile, the rest of GE pushing into the base. Oh, there you are. <laughs> double kill for Prey. There's a big difference in the amount of Goodbye, damage Fury. onto the back line in this game compared yeah. to the last one. They just can't kill both carries. They could end it right here too. They've got Baron, yeah. they've got everybody up but Kuro. Yeah. Looks like this is going to be the end of this one. And so after a really sloppy game number one, GE comes back and says, all right, all right, we're going to take this one a little bit seriously. Ends it at about 35 minutes, and that is a quick 2-0 for the GE Tigers. GG, they are now 9-0 on the season. Pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, they do have that soft early season that we saw last time, however, and tonight, 
was not the best demonstration of their powers. We probably saw their worst game all season in game one. It's the one. mind games, man. It's the mind games, the IEM mind <laughs> games. <laughs> I don't know if that was a mind game or just being lazy. It's I'm going to go, game. I don't think it's the mind games. <laughs> the mind games. <laughs> Either way, it is the uh, Hunger Games for Samsung, and they're left hungry for a win still in Champions. You see, you like what I did with that one? I, I did. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, I, I'm in awe of your scintillating wit, dog. I'm quite the wordsmith, I know. You, you managed to equate hunger with hungry. I, it's hard. <laughs> I didn't ask for these powers, you know? Well, much better game, too, for the GE Tigers. Indeed. Still that kind of awkward tower dive that I don't think they would have dared to make against a yeah. superior team. But Samsung really did play much better than we've seen them in game one this series. And they legitimately gave GE a run for their money, had excellent warding. Found some good fights. Kuve played well on that Hecarim. And they they put together much more of a contest for the Tigers than we had anticipated coming into tonight. Well, Samsung is getting into this position where I feel like versus IM versus KT, maybe we could see Samsung take a match win. Maybe. Maybe we could. Yeah. Maybe we could. They, they are developing over the course of the season. We do see that change taking hold and I, I do think that Hecarim is that kind of more carry oriented champion that is better for Kube. Yep. Fans of Smeb there. And there's the man himself. Smeb. From zero to hero this season. Incredible rise. Yeah. Truly. And it should be exciting to see him at some international competition. Yeah, I'm really so excited to check those champion games out. Pool. But we've got they've got to get through a match versus Jin Air first. That's going to be, that is going to be the one to watch. Absolutely. Very close 2-1 series the last time those teams clashed. Yep. Jenner and SK Telecom, the closest that GE has come to a match defeat this season. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see Lee's Rengar again, are we? Not anytime soon. That was not the greatest. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. seem to really be in his wheelhouse. I would say so. Well. A win is a win is a win. Curls Victor is still looking very strong. Even if he does first pick it. Yeah, I wonder <laughs> if we're going to see them use the uh, Victor against some of the better teams. But we'll see. Who's the MVP for game number two? It is Smeb with that top lane rumble. 80% contribution for kill. Very impressive. Had a lot of great equalizers. And that is going to put him up to third, tied with the 500 point Faker. Yeah, had a lot of outstanding performances this season. Yeah. That was just really great jungling by Lee, too. You have to say, to make that work, we're just going to ignore the tower dive and then move right back into his turret defense, where he did, with the help of Lee, turn this 2v3 around into a double kill. Great patience. Now, Lee's cataclysms were very good this game. And then it's time Boom. to make some more glue bay. That's right. <laughs> UQ that is such a good equalizer. If, remember, this was a 4v5, too, but they have such a lead at this point, and he hits a spot-on ultimate. I believe he was able to kill Bliss before Bliss could ult there, too. He did, he did ult, but he uh, died right as he was ulting, I believe. Uh, so okay. I checked the cooldown afterwards, and I think that's what happened. I was looking, and I couldn't see it. Yep. All right, and another great equalizer as well, helping that Cataclysm do work, and Gorilla with that flash whirlwind on Ethereum. Yeah, game two is... Much more what we would expect from the GE Tigers. And the big difference here was that Kassadin was lacking, and all they could do was make Kuve big in the back line instead of killing both Kuro and Prey like they were able to do in the last game yeah. to nearly win, and Prey just kites him out and much just, easier without that Kassadin. I think that was a good ban. Ending the game so decisively this time, too. Indeed. Much more crisp play from yep. the Tigers. Looking much better, I would say. I like it. So that means that we're brought to our MVP interview, translated by the one and only June. Go for it, man. All right, thank you very much, Montendo. Hello, everyone. This uh, will be having an MVP interview with players of G Tigers, who won 2-0 today against Samsung. Prey and Smep being the MVPs of today's game. So G Tigers winning uh, nine times in a row thus far in the season, being unbeaten. 
So, first interview with Prey. So, you, you played very well as always, uh, playing very well. So, what are your thoughts right now? Um, today's match, I thought it would be e easier than um, it was. It actually was. So, I, th I think we need to practice more and um, not underestimate weak opponents. So, how did you prepare for today's match? Um, saying that you just underestimated them. Um, in reality, uh, we practiced. We uh, we we have a lot of things prepared against Jinair, um instead of Samsung. So today's match was a lot harder than expected. So in the early game, in the game one, you, it's, uh, you, you had an advantage, but. Hecarim started split pushing very well, so what, what, you see, what are the thoughts? Um, well, in, even in our scrims, that doesn't really happen often, so when it actually happened, st people started being really worried and tilting, kind of, but we were able to focus in the end. Oh, so when Smack got taught, uh, caught in game one, uh, that allowed uh, Samsung to take the uh, Baron. Um, what, what's your opinion, Smack? Um, well, I didn't have teleport, uh, but um, Hecarim had teleport, so also we will just like run away. Uh, but we got caught nonetheless because of that. So at the very end of the game, you uh, you got a double kill at the end for flashing forward to kill John, uh, John etc. So what, did you predict your victory at the end? Um, we didn't. I didn't really practice uh, uh, against Hecarim in particular, even in scrims. Not not much experience playing against Hecarim. Uh, Hecarim was just dashing towards me really crazily. So. Um, I was just worried, but I just killed them at the end. So. Um, in our in our team, there's some players who think uh, who are convinced that they can win, but uh, there are some players who weren't convinced. But at at the end, the louder voice was the players were the players who said we can end this game. So uh, I'm kind of thankful, actually. So, anything you want to say against Jinair, who you prepared so well, supposedly? Um, we prepared a, a lot against Jinair, as mentioned before, so we'll make sure we'll crush him. So, the second MVP in interview with Smep. So, thoughts after winning to this game? Um, the game was harder than expected. It was really hard to win today, so um, qu we kind of learned a lesson to not underestimate opponents. So against Juno, we'll just try hard hardest as always. Um, in game one, Hecarim he was really strong uh, with split pushing. So what what were your thoughts when he when Hecarim was picked in game two? Um, I didn't really face a lot against Hecarim in, uh, in scrims and solo queue, so, uh, so I was kind of inexperienced, but it worked. Uh, it, at the end, it worked out okay, even though I got ganked and dove, uh, uh, dove a lot of times. They dived on me a lot of times using it, so I was kind of flustered. But again, went well. Um, today's concept in outfit is um, they didn't really tell me, but I'm guessing it's a school outfit. Oh, um, pray saying, pray saying that they're just reusing the outfit. <laughs> We've seen this one before. The mind games. Uh, oh, and Prey's like, oh, I'm sorry, re re because reusing isn't, uh, it's not very thought of well in, in like as a creative idea. So Prey's like, oh no, I'm sorry. But there's probably a plan. Uh, there's probably an idea.
Um, against Jinnea, we conceded one game. We only won 2 1, conceded one game. So, against Jinnea this time round, we'll make sure we'll 2 0. So, that's the end of the interview. Monte and Doa, take it away, guys. All right, thank you, June, for the translation, as always. That fan was from Austria, not Australia. Get it right, Monty. I'm yeah, tired geez. of you messing this up. <laughs> Mixing up my continents left <laughs> and right. Well, the results of today, a 2-0 for the GE Tigers. Wasn't the most clean victory in a row per se, but a win is a win is a win. Well, they didn't really have to show much either, just picking that victor for the second series in a row, keeping a lot under wraps, that's for sure. Wow. And GE improved to 9-0, pretty much Pretty much guaranteed a playoff spot at this point. They it would be pretty inconceivable for yeah. anybody to over.